totally new figure today, the sphere. Okay, the sphere, the three-dimensional circle. All right, so we have to cover both surface area and sphere because we haven't done surface area yet because it's a total, totally new figure. Uh, this one, make a note, is not on the formula sheet. There are no surface area formulas on the formula sheet. So if you want to make a note right now, this one is not on there. It's an easy one to remember, though. It's not too complicated, I don't think, anyway. Surface area of a sphere. Ready for this? Four circles. Four circles. What's a circle? Four circles. That's it. Four circles. Okay, we jump right into the hardcore ones. I didn't, like, here's a nice little sphere. Find the surface area. I, we don't have time for that. All right, and you guys are above that, in my opinion. Uh, I am going to give you the circumference, though, of a cross-section of the center of a rubber ball. The rubber ball tells me, have you seen a rubber ball before? It's in the shape of a sphere. Okay, I don't, you know, hopefully, I just want to make sure we're clear on that. I didn't need to come out and say the word sphere. The circumference is 20 pi centimeters. What's the surface area of this ball? I just gave you that formula, 4 pi r squared. What is the only value you need for surface area of a sphere? Radius. You know the radius, you know the surface area. So how can I use circumference to get to the radius? Anybody remember their circumference formula? C equals pi d or 2 pi r, whatever was floating in your boat back in the day. How can you get the radius from this formula? Solve for diameter and divided by two. Let's do it. Circumference is 20 pi. Plug it in for C. Twenty pi equals pi D. You see the diameter already, or do you want to do something on both sides? I don't care. Where do you want to go from here? Any way you want to go. Nine, any way you want to go. Cross out the pies, divide both sides by pies, I don't care. Either way, your diameter will be 20, which means the radius I'm going to plug in is 10. <coughs> and let's leave our answer in terms of pi when we go back and solve for the surface area, so you don't have to write out all decimals here today. Leave your answer in terms of pi. So I have 4 pi times 10 squared. Who is going to be on their A game right now when they tell me the full answer in terms of pi? Full answer in terms of pi. Who's going to be on their A game? 15, let's try. Nice! He remembered centimeters squared because we're talking about surface area. There we go, Henrik. Nice. Love it. Everyone all right? Volume. That's on you. It's on the formula sheet. Any volume, remember, is on the formula sheet. Take a look at this. Good thing you're given this one. Look how this one is, huh? Four-thirds pi r Ooh, cube. Cube. What's the only value you need to find volume? Also the radius. Yeah, yeah. All right. So in number two, you know the volume. Find the surface area. What is this guy doing? Hey, what's still the only value you need for surface area? Radius. Can you get that from the volume formula? Yeah, you're darn right we can. Let's do it. The volume, 36 pi equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And you're looking for the radius, remember. How do I get r by itself? And I am going to have to show you maybe, I don't know if you did it last year, a new button on your calculator at the end of this. Both sides have a 
pi, so if you want to cancel them out right now, you can. 36 equals 4 thirds r squared, or r cubed, calm it down. What do you guys want to do from here? I still need to get that r cubed by itself. John? I can multiply both sides by 3 over 4. So we get r cubed to be, what do we add in there, 27? Okay, I don't know if you've ever been to this point yet in your mathematical career, because that's not squared, so I don't want to take the square root. Take the, what's called the cube root, yes. Now, where is that on your calculator? Two places. Everyone, no matter what version of calculator you have, you can hit your math button, and you'll see the cube root sign. So if you hit your math button, you'll see the cube root button. Some of you that have a higher operating system, you can hit alpha window quicker if you want. You go alpha window, a menu will pop up and you should see the cube root there. But again, everyone can get the cube root button under math, okay, under math. So what is the cube root of 27? Uh, 18, what are you getting? Cube root of 27? 3? Now take that 3, go back and find the surface area now. And keep just leave it in terms of pi here today. I don't feel like writing out all these decimals. So 4 pi, 3 squared. And what do you guys have for the surface area with a pi in it? 28, nope. How about 12? Surface area with the pi in it. Watch your mouth. There you go. <coughs> Feeling all right? I have no idea what's up next. What's up next? Oh, volleyballs. Yeah, go ahead. Read through that, kids. How much does the radius increase when the volleyball is fully inflated? Everybody, I'll meet you back in five minutes. Go right ahead. I'll meet you back in five minutes. Please do not go on to the last problem. Just worry about the volleyballs here. How much does the radius go up by? Well, a couple of groups presented out to us. Okay, a lot of you guys, hey, I saw a lot of good things. I think it's just what you're typing in your calculator that's hurting you a little bit. Uh, you can divide by pi. You can multiply by 3 fourths. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. I multiplied by 3 fourths first. I got 135 over here, and then I got pi r cubed. Then I decided to divide by pi. And again, you don't want to round any decimals here. Don't round any decimals to the end. I got 42.9718 3463, and then I took the cube root, and the radius of the partially inflated volleyball was about three and a half, but I didn't round it, kept all the decimals rocking. 2975. All good. And then you just do the same exact thing, but now you're using 294. And I'm not going to go through all the steps again. I'll just write out what I got. my radius was, which was 4.124958406. I subtracted the two. All right, the difference in the radii rounded to the nearest tenth increases by 0.6 inches. And again, I just subtracted the two radii. That's where I got that 0.6 from. That was an old regents question, FYI. Old regents question right there that appeared. Questions? Last thing we just got to cover 
is a hemisphere. And some of you, right, what's, what's there to cover? Just divide everything by two. No. No. Unfortunately not. So we're going to find volume and surface area of this. I do want to start with the volume first. What's the volume of a regular sphere? A full sphere, I should say. Not a regular, but a full sphere. Four-thirds pi r cubed, right off the reference sheet. Yes, you are going to divide that by two or multiply it by one half. That surface area is going to be a little different, though. So with the volume, just cut the volume in half. Yep, for a hemisphere. So ready? Four-thirds pi, what's your radius here? 14 cubed, not squared, cubed. And then you can multiply it by a half. So I'll let you do that and round to the nearest 10. And then we got to get really hyper focused on the surface area. Snow globes, that's what's coming to mind right now. Paperweights. What do we end up with here for the volume after you cut it in half? 22, what are you getting for the volume? There you go, feet. Thank you. Ready for the surface area. Why is it just not divided by two, right? Because you do have, right? Surface area, you got four pi r squared from today, right? And you are correct, you're going to divide it by two, but that's not it. The surface area is everything you can glide your hand over. This divided by two is just the dome part. I flip it up to you. What do you still have on the bottom that you can glide your hand over? A circle. All right? You still have to add in the area of a circle, which would be what? Pi r squared. Okay? This 4 pi r squared divided by 2 is just this top part here. You still have to account for what's on the bottom, which is a circle when you lift it up. All right? So I don't, if you want to remember to do that, or you could just remember the, what happens when I divide this by 2? What's this become? 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared. How many do I have total? 3 pi r squared. I don't care which way method you remember all right, to find the surface area of a hemisphere, but you can't just divide by 2. You need to add the circle in. Three pi radius is still 14, but now we're squaring it. <laughs> and what are we getting for the surface area? What do we round? Nearest tenth? Uh, nope, we don't have one. How about 13? Nearest tenth? Squared because it's surface area. Good catch. Are we okay there? Because I threw a couple in there on the assignment tonight, hemispheres. Volume's fine. Just divide it by two because you're filling it up. But surface area, you got to add in that extra circle. Regents, let's go. Regents out. We're not wasting the time on homework. Regents out.
August 2018, probably. August 2018. Make sure it says August 2018 on it. We have two more topics left in the entire course, so odds are we can do almost all of these. I just, I don't, I do so many with certain classes and different problems with others. I have no idea where we are. So what's the first one? I'm going to assume it's number three that we haven't done in this class. You guys tell me, what's the first one we haven't done here? We haven't done one? Oh, okay. Maybe I, that's right. I ended it a little early with you guys. So, all right, here we go. Number one. You guys can take a look at it. This deals with parallel lines. You really didn't even know if you didn't even need to know these were parallel, but you could have. <clears throat> All right, here you go. Ready? Hopefully, we're done by 137. You can find the angle next to it. What's the relationship? Supplementary, they're linear pairs. So if that's 137, the one next to it was 43 degrees. And then look at that. You have two out of three angles in a triangle. So you can have 180 minus the 43 minus the 32 end up giving you 100 and is that what this comes out to be? 105? 105. Tough one right off the bat, huh? Is two the next one we haven't done? Okay, so we haven't done much here, have we? All right, that's fine. All right, go ahead. It's a line reflection and a translation. What's the relationship between the beginning and the ending one? I get a little nervous here. I think I know what you're going to pick, but you might get a little confused. So reflection translation, they change the shape or size. So what can you tell me about, at least about the figures at the end? They're going to be congruent at least because I didn't change the size. Will they be similar at the end? You didn't change the angle measure, did you? Okay, so they're going to be both congruent and similar. All right. I know we haven't done three. Okay, think about it. This is the unit we're in right now. All right, so it doesn't matter which leg you rotate around. They're both the same. Is it good? First of all, is it going to be a cylinder or a cone? It's going to be, definitely be a cone. Now, when I keep rotating around, will the diameter, the diameter, not the radius, be 6 or 12? 12, because 12, it's 6 right now, which is the radius. I go on the other side, makes another radius of 6. 
for a total diameter of 12. Yep. Four done or no? I just, just keep going. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to come around then. I need four, five, and six done before we leave today. Four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. I'll come around and look at your work.